Hi, this week's weekly roundup we're seeing small routers, tiny Arduinos, high resolution positioning boards, small robots, big robots, and also some creepy ones. First up on Kickstarter, there's more educational kits. The Esprit Plus is another Lego compatible building block. It allows you to code up in Scratch, JavaScript for some bizarre reason, and also Apple Swift. It is programmed via Bluetooth and fully supports the WeDo sensors, so you can create some fun and interesting things. Interestingly, I couldn't find any specs on what the Plus contains, so I'm assuming that the only difference to the previous version is the Bluetooth module. If you're a 3D printing fiend, then you'll probably know all about moisture issues that can destroy your prints. The print dry is a filament drying mechanism that will solve this problem for you. It's designed to dry and feed the filament into your printer at the same time. Next up on Kickstarter we have robots. The Mimic Immersion robot allows you to control a small robot by moving your arms around. You can see what you're about to crash into with a VR headset. Oh, nice tie. Personally I think it's a bit of a gimmick, but we're going to see more of this heading our way in future. The other end of the spectrum, there's the piloted walking robot. Hang on, are they rocket launchers on the side? Looks like something from Robocop. Anyway, this is yet another bleeding edge campaign of stuff we're going to see more of in the future. If you're looking for high precision centimetre level positioning, then check out the RTK box. It uses GPS, BDO and GLONASS satellite signals to achieve this without, surprisingly, no IMU on board. The Muses is an open source transmitter board capable of supporting a whole range of broadcast standards. Want to start up your own digital TV channel? Get one of these, or oh, maybe a broadcast license. Comes in two flavours, one that accepts an HDMI signal and another that just accepts data from a USB port. Has a bunch of GPIO pins for additional control. The Pi Shield provides an 8 port analog to digital converter and four additional I2C ports for your Pi Zero. Of course, it can also be fitted to a normal Pi as well. And from Indiegogo, Speaking of tiny, how cool is this? The Vocore 2 is a tiny board designed specifically to be a router. It contains a MediaTek SOC with two 100 megabit Ethernet ports, 802.11n, Wi-Fi, SD card and a whole bunch of GPIOs. It runs OpenWAT as stock and is powered from either USB, LiPo or PoE. This isn't really a maker board per se, but I thought it was cool and something we're also going to see a lot more of in future. The Ockel Sirius contains an Intel X7 Z8750 quad-core CPU, supporting up to 4K video, 4GB DDR3 RAM, 64GB eMMC, microSD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB 3.0, 3 amp hour LiPo, and IMU. Nice. I like to see Linux on this little baby. What is it with robots these days? Seems there's a whole bunch of them appearing on the market, wanting to be your servant, or overlords. The Robelf is yet another run-of-the-mill robot that claims to make your life oh so much easier. Look, there he is with the family. And you can even stick post-it notes on him. And he'll guard your home while you're asleep. Think about it. While you're asleep. While you're asleep. Oh, creepy. From Crowd Supply we have... There's the Thing Sock, which claims to be a gateway between a whole bunch of peripherals and a sock. Will be interesting to see this one go live. The Newtent... Is that how you say it? Is another high precision navigation board similar to the RTK box, but is a lot more expensive at 500 US for just the board. It's unclear just how much better it is compared to the RTK box, but I guess that it wouldn't be $300 better. And on the Tinty side. Now this is nice. It may be just another ESP8266 board, but the petal is the smallest I've seen with the most features. Contains temperature and lux sensor, accelerometer, motor driver, LiPo battery management and USB to serial port. Nice. Continuing the tiny theme, we have the Bean Duino, which packs an AT Tiny 8.5 and USB onto a small 11 by 20 millimeter package. Supports Adafruit's Gamma Boot that you'll have to load up yourself and also the Arduino IDE from version 1 onwards. The Neo PLC 8 channel high current PWM board is also the smallest I've seen. Supports up to 8 channels and can sync 9 amps at 12 volts with 12 bit resolution. That's huge. We're coming into Christmas, so grab a couple to control your Christmas lights. 
These guys also have a bunch of other boards in the Neo PLC series. Might want to check out those as well. Things seem to be fairly quiet from Adafruit, Spark Farm and Seed at the moment. But these Power over Ethernet splitters are great. PoE is great if you want to deck out your house with fixed home automation devices. No more war warts sticking into PowerPoints and scattered through the house. This will split up your PoE enabled Ethernet port to support a whole range of SBCs and devices. Note that you'll need a PoE enabled switch or PoE injector at the other end. And on the list of cheap Chinese manufacturers, there's Banggood.com, which is sort of aiming to be an AliExpress type online shop. But, you know, it has some interesting products there that you don't find anywhere else. So, another quiet week this week. If I've missed out anything, then let me know. As always, links are below and also on my website. I'm now on Patreon, so supporting me there helps me to produce videos like this. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to like, and it'll be great to see you as a subscriber if you're not already. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.